In this clip, we'll learn how to quickly send our textured assets back over to Maya using the MGO plugin here inside of Mari. Okay, so I have our fully textured little creature here up inside of Mari, and in the last video, we learned how to render this out using the Moto Renderer. Now, more than likely, you're going to be wanting to do your rendering over inside of Maya, and you're going to want to be taking all of these textures and moving them over into Maya as quickly and efficiently as possible. Well, we're going to learn how to do just that in this video using the MGO plugin here inside of Mari. Now, if we access that plugin, we can come up to the Python menu under examples and down at the bottom go to the MGO uh, menu and we'll open up the MGO palette, very first option there. Now, there's some options here inside this palette. We're going to go over really quickly here, but just so you know, I am using an AI standard shader inside this project, and it has three inputs, one for diffuse, one for normal, and one for specular roughness. Now, I do also have some custom attributes that I've set here inside of my AI standard shader uh, down here below the inputs, so keep that in mind. Now, I also have the fully layered channels inside this project. So if we came over here to diffuse, you can see there's lots of layers inside of these channels. So this is basically the project that I worked in when I was creating the textures for this little guy. Now over here inside of the MGO palette, you'll notice here that the first thing we see is Maya host and mine is set to local host only. Now, if you check inside the MGO documentation, there is some workflows set up so that you can actually move this data over a network from one computer to another. I'm not doing that though, I'm just working on Maya and Mari here on my same computer, so we're going to leave this set to localhost only. Now, just so you know, if I come over here and pull up Maya, I do have a scene open and inside this scene, I have our little crab geometry. You can see I've got some lights set up just so we can do some basic rendering for him. But if I jump over here into my hypershade, you'll see that I have a backdrop and a checker material created, but I don't have anything yet in Maya for the crab. Let's jump back over into Mari and send some textures over. So the first thing we need to do here is define our output folder. Now, I've already done this by clicking on this little folder button right here and browsing to a location inside my exercise files. And for your reference, the button right above that is something that opens the materializer. Now, the materializer is something for creating and loading material presets here inside of Mari. We're not really going to dive into that in this course, but you can feel free to experiment with that feature as well. Below the output location or the output folder, we have our output file types. Now this is for 8-bit files and 16 and 32-bit files. And you can see I currently have my 8-bit set to TIFF and my high dynamic range files set to EXR. And I'm just going to leave them set to that, but you can change these to whatever you want here. Now the next option is the filter. Now, the filter is going to control the filtering of these textures once they get sent over into Maya and are plugged into a Maya file node. So you can actually uh, select a couple of options here. Typically, I'll leave that set to off. Okay, now in this final row here, we have some different options here, and these are kind of important. So the first one is to export texture channels. We definitely want that one selected. The next one is to export shader attributes. Now, you remember I mentioned that I had some custom attributes set for my AI standard here. So that is down here below the inputs, things like my specular color, specular weight, uh, things that are not being driven by a texture input. These are the attributes that we can pass over to Maya. And lastly here, we can export out our geometry as well. So now this next option is for what we want to export. So you can see we can export the selected object, the visible object. If we have some of our objects hidden, uh, we can export all objects or we can even export the environment and the camera. 
So now the last button here, this is going to be for the MGO description and it's going to export that to the project folder if you just want to export the description. So we're wanting to get the textures over there. So we're going to go ahead and click this arrow button right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and Mari is going to go through the process of moving all of my textures into that output folder that we specified. And I'm going to come over here and find that folder. I think I have it open here. And we'll just pull that up. There we go. There it is. And what I like to do is I like to come in here once Mari has completed this operation and just sort of spot check some of my textures. So we'll just double click on this one here. And once that opens up, I'll drag that over for you. And there we go. We'll go ahead and just pull this over so you can see. Fantastic. So you can see this is my diffuse channel. Now remember, this is a multi-tile layout. This particular creature has multiple texture spaces. So I have what looks like six different color maps here, or, or six different diffuse texture maps. And then I also have six different normal maps and six different specular roughness maps. So you can see here, just in looking at the, some of these images, everything looks like it exported correctly. So uh, it looks pretty good. Now at this point, let's go ahead and just check out how this looks over on the Maya side. I'm going to go ahead and jump over here into Maya. And you can see we've got a message down there. Let's go ahead and clear that. And the first thing I'm going to do is look inside the Hypershade because we now have a shading network that's been built for us here. Now this shading network is a direct result of what we just did over inside of Mari. So we can come in here and we can look and you can see this is titled MGO AI Standard Matte. That's exactly what we would expect, right? And we have three different file nodes that have been connected. We have one for the diffuse. You can see the diffuse right there. Uh, we have one for the specular roughness. And then we have a file node here for the creature normal, or rather for the normal map. Now, in looking through here, you can see this has actually done a pretty good job of building a shading network. However, uh, if you're familiar with the way Maya's color management works, there is one minor change that we need to make to these file nodes here for the specular roughness and for the normal map. And that's right over here for color space. So if you're familiar with the process of using a linear workflow and how that relates to Maya's color space, you'll know that things that don't affect color in a final render, things like a normal map or a specular roughness map, these are things that we want to utilize them in their current state. With something like a color map, a low dynamic range image like this one, Maya is going to actually remove the sRGB gamma from these texture maps so it can be rendered in a linear color space at render time. Now, after the render has occurred, it'll reapply that sRGB gamma to the entire rendered image. But for color maps, that is just fine. That's what we want. But for things like a roughness map and a normal map, the way these maps are interpreted inside the render engine depends on the gamma that was baked into these maps when Mari saved them out. So we need to come in here for the color space and actually switch this from sRGB to raw, just like so. If we come over here and do that for both of those two file nodes, both of those images should be read correctly. And we can come over here and just tap this generate preview button if we want. And that should be updated and everything should be good. So the next thing we need to do here is we need to come in and actually assign this shader over to our creature geometry. I'll just go ahead and select a piece of the geometry and tap the up arrow key to select the group. And I'm going to right click. And let me do this so you can hopefully see this. Come down to assign existing material and we'll choose that MGO AI standard mat. Just like so. Okay, great. So the material's been assigned. Let's go ahead and do a quick render with Arnold here and see how this worked out for us. We'll go ahead and start the Arnold render view here. Now, this is something that Arnold does. It actually takes all of those image files 
those TIFFs, JPEGs, whatever it is you're using, and it actually converts them to TX files. A TX file is a MIP mapped image file format that is much more efficient for Arnold to render. You can see here that we are actually rendering the finished textures, just as we would expect, right out of Mari. And I'm just going to go ahead and shrink this window down just a little bit here. So I can kind of see my viewport behind it. I'm going to orbit around just uh, so we can kind of take a look at these textures. And make sure that everything is rendering as it should be. So I'm looking here and the roughness map does seem to be working as expected. A color map is definitely working and I believe the normal map is also working here for this particular creature. I know that based on his UVs there's a seam right down his back here so I wanted to make sure that everything looks good back here and it does. So we are successfully rendering these textures with the click of a button to send them over from Mari into Maya. Now, there is something important to consider here. I am using Maya 2017 right now. And if we come up here to the Arnold menu and look at the About, I am currently using the Maya to Arnold plugin version 1.3. Now, this, is, this particular version of the plugin uses the Arnold Core 4.2.14.0. Now, recently, Arnold has released a new version of their core. It's Arnold Core 5.0. And this process is going to work just slightly differently if you're using the most recent version of the Arnold Core, version 5. Let's go ahead and do another quick video after this one and show you exactly what's going to be different.